And we're going to talk about Alfonso Davies. Now, Pa, you've had the chance to play with and coach some pretty incredible people and some pretty incredible players. Obviously, the name and all the headlines of Canadian soccer right now is Alfonso Davies. You have a good relationship with him. I'm curious, though, what's the biggest improvement or piece of progress you've noticed from him, from his time with you at the Whitecaps to where he is now with Bayern and the Canadian senior side? Well, I think for him is the growth, right? And it's just about being around better players, um, the tactical aspect of the game. You know, he's starting to understand it, especially now as a left back. I know he's not a position that he always wants to play, but I think that would become that he, that is his position. You know, he can have the game in front of him, but as well as he can play as a winger. So to be versatile, that is, that is just good for him. But his growth as a, as a man and as a player, that is the biggest thing that I've seen in him. And rightfully so, you know, he is, he's, he's, he's by now, you look at him, you'll say he's one of the top three left backs in the world. Well, Ollie, as a fan and as a pundit, what do you make and what would you like to add to that? I, I just wanted to ask Parr, actually. Do you notice on the field, he seems a bit more ruthless to me. He seems like he's becoming the Bayern Munich player now rather than kind of the, you know, the Canadian underdog story. Is, is there a bit of a yeah. change you're detecting in him? Well, uh, like um, when you have a striker like Le Lewandowski yeah. and with the speed that Fonzie has and the technique is when you come to those areas, like you got to deliver. You got to deliver pinpoint crosses for him to finish. And I think that's that's one of the part that we also had conversation a lot while he was at the white cap. It's like you have the speed, you have everything, but then you need to add those assists in you. And to see him doing it on a regular basis and even scoring with his right foot, which I've always challenged for him, it's you know, it's great. Like he's taking it to strike, but he's with one of the best clubs, one of the most uh, best and organized clubs in the world. And from there it can only get better and better. So beside Bayern Munich there's no there's about three four other clubs that are at the top that he can seek if he want to go there but he's still got a lot to learn and we should not forget he's just only 20. he's not having even reached his peak he got five six more years before he can actually reach his peak so mm -hmm. the growth that he's having now is unbelievable and that's credit to him mm -hmm. I'm um, looking at some other young Canadians that are coming through. Uh, obviously, the Olympic tournament wrapped up for Canada yesterday with, with a semi-final yep. defeat in Mexico. Um, what did you make of that team, Pa? Where, where, where do you think they maybe came up short? And what did you think of the overall performance in the tournament? Well, the overall performance of Canada, I think they did very well, given that there was no games to play for them. Yes. But for me, the biggest um, the biggest thing I took away from, from watching the Canada versus Mexico is actually you look at the Mexican team and all these players, they play in Liga MX, right? Right. They all are starting in their teams. And I think if you look at the game, all the starters that are playing there, they have, what, 1,400 games amongst yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And they started 1,200 and something odd games. And that totaled into 1,709,000 9, minutes played. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the Canadian team and then you have players who have only played or started, played games 280 something odd games and then yeah. started 189 and played in total minutes 17,000. That is a huge difference. Yeah. And that's why, that, that's what, that is a huge difference because players at a young age need games, right? And that's where the CPL will come in and that's where CPL is good because kids need games. So when we are talking about developing young Canadians, the CPL is the front runner for that, mm -hmm. right? Even for the, uh, because there's only three of the top teams in Canada, but they all play in the MLS. Mm -hmm. So they are not going to go and play young players. CPL is perfectly suited for that, to have these young players into the CPL, playing minutes, getting better every day, developing. Yeah. So to see that contrast was, was huge and then you see how amount of national caps also the mexican team have among themselves yeah. was what 88 88 yeah, yeah 88 to 31 yeah, 88 yeah. so 88 to 31 so now then you see the difference so when we talk about overall global and asking us why canada couldn't go further they should prove right there mm -hmm. right our young our young players they need games they need clubs that they will go in and get games so that's the proof right there Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why CPL is perfect for it. CPL is the perfect platform.
Yeah. Well, speaking of CPL, that's what we want to talk about next, Pa. And on Friday, Pacific tried to pull a fast one on us by casually announcing that Pacific was training with the Vancouver Whitecaps at UBC, including a closed-door mm -hmm. scrimmage. So first, the question that I'm sure Pacific fans are dying to know, was it a 5-0 win for Pacific despite all of the odds? How did it go? <laughs> and, and just to build on that as well, Pa, is this something, this cooperation, this partnership with the Whitecaps, something we can expect oh, to yeah. see more of? 100%. I, I mean, we're the closest uh, team that they have at the professional level. So for us, it's about working together and helping another Canadian team that is in need of preparing themselves for the upcoming season. But also, you want to look in and build the partnership and the relationship that goes both ways among both teams. Because if you look at it by the end of the day, we're just an hour and a half ferry away from each other. So mm -hmm. to create that partnership, to create that bond and help each other, I think that is the definition of uh, of, uh, of football clubs, right? We all know in Europe, within the vicinity of, uh, let's say, I don't know, two hours, you have four or five other clubs, yeah. right? But they will work with one another. But once you step on the wide line, mm -hmm. you try to win in game. But when you step off it, it's like, okay, how can we collaborate? How can we be as one and help each other? Because by the end of the day, it's Canada who is going to benefit from it. All right, it's not uh, Rob Friend or Pamu Dukaza or James Merriman is going to benefit from it. It's Pacific together with Whitecaps that are going to benefit from it. So any ways that we can create partnership amongst ourselves with the CPL and the Canadian clubs that are in MLS will be a perfect situation. And again, that's what we see when Mexico plays against Canada. Some of the previous players are uh, loaned out to other Liga yeah. MX teams so that they can perform. You know, and they can get their national team stronger. Yeah. Uh, pa, just lastly, before we finish up, congratulations, first of all, on, on signing a new three-year contract and to James Merriman as well. Um, when, you look you. Th when you look three years down the line, what would you like to build at Pacific? What can you achieve in that time frame, do you think? I mean, uh, James and I have this vision of uh, the making of, uh, you know, uh, the a pathway for young Canadian players, you yeah. know, to have opportunity to step and be in the professional game and develop them, and also hopefully have some players represent us in the national team and beyond. So for us, it's about building a football club, which which we started last year and we're going to continue. But to have a platform where young Canadians can come in and develop and get better and showcase their their quality and skills, you know, that is like that is the aim to develop young Canadian teams on the island, but also young Canadian players that have the talent to give them the opportunity because it's needed.